matchup tonight as the North Shore Conference takes on the Classic 8. It's the Homestead Highlanders taking on the Arrowhead Warhawks. Good evening, everyone. I'm John Weiser. He's the Hall of Fame coach, Terry Kelly, and both teams come into this contest 1-0, coach, both winning their opening matches last week. Arrowhead a win over Marquette, and Homestead a tight one over Germantown. Right, and two teams that have known each other well over the years. Many times when they were both in D1, they were beaten in the playoffs. So this is a series they love. Intriguing in a sense, too. We look at both these teams, size advantage maybe to Arrowhead and maybe some of the experience on the Homestead side. Right, and Arrowhead's depth, you know, pays dividends for them, but Homestead has some outstanding players as well. So we'll see what kind of wins out here. These two teams played a close one last year. We can only hope it could be just as good. Homestead scoring in the final minute of that contest and a two-point conversion to pick up the win. And this is a team that also made it to the state championship of Division II last year. 23-22 yeah, game last year. Hopefully we'll have that same kind of excitement this evening. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to watching a couple of key players tonight for both squads. We'll start first for Arrowhead. They've got an outstanding receiving core led by Andrew Weske. Yeah, I asked Matt Harris who he'd like to say we should feature it. He said, how about my whole receiving core? No, narrow it down. Andrew Weske, two touchdown catches last week. Got a good offensive lineman in Derek Jensen, a junior. Only a junior. Everybody around the country is looking at him. He's got tremendous size. Other side of the ball for Arrowhead, Thomas Curry, senior linebacker. Yeah, Thomas Curry, linebacker. Great number of tackles last year. He's paired up with Ben Hartzell. They refer to themselves as the Bash Brothers. So, <laughs> Gotta love it. Over on the Highlanders' side, a good quarterback running back du duo in Sal, Sal Balistrieri and Dom Bruno. Uh, Sal was a second-team all-conference selection last year. Um, carries the ball as well as throws it well. And Dom Bruno, first time as a starter last week, ran for about 135 yards. On the defensive side, Drew Wilson, a senior linebacker. Highly regarded linebacker, a finalist for the John Anderson Award that's given to the top senior linebacker. Another good player is defensive back Anthony Chung, second team all-conference a year ago. Right, three-sport athlete. They say he is the key to their defensive backfield, aligns everybody, and uh, is another one of those players that they're depending on to kind of weak, weaken that passing attack of Arrowhead. We'll see. Is it the passing attack of Arrowhead? Is it the running game of Homestead that carries these teams here tonight? We'll find out. Stay tuned. Mike McGivern will have the coaches coming along next as we continue from Homestead High School. This is the Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Homestead High School for tonight's non-conference varsity football game. Automotive Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week, presented by Landmark Credit Union. We're live at Homestead High School as Arrowhead 
takes on Homestead in a non-conference game. I'm here with the two head coaches, Matt Harris from Arrowhead, Drake Zortman from Homestead. Drake, I'm going to start with you. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, we talked about this a few minutes ago that football coaches consistently tell me they learn more about their team between week one and two than any time in the year. Uh, we certainly agree. We think that the jump in the improvement from week one to week two is probably the, the greatest improvement you're going to see all year long. And, and it's a season of small steps, and you just try to be as good as you can at the end. Hey, good win last week against a really quality opponent. Um, Health-wise, you guys came out of that pretty good? We're doing okay. We're doing okay in a real physical week one matchup against an old friend from down the road. Um, Germantown's a good football team. We we're, we're feel very good about getting out of there with a win. And are you telling me your guys are going to run a couple of hook and ladders? I can't tell this this coach. They're, they're not doing that. I'm only kidding. Matt Harris from Arrowhead. Same question for you. Between week one and week two, you sure learn a lot about your team. Yeah, I think so. You get a, you finally get a real test to be able to check and fix mistakes. You know, the, the bullets are really finally flying and the lights are on and, it, and it's time to, you know, fix those little things. And, and, and the kids relax a little bit more in week two, and that's why I think you see a lot of improvement. So. Hey, guys, I'm going to ask you both the same question. I always have a ton of respect for programs that don't shy away week one and week two. Look, we're going to play quality opponents right off the jump, and we're not going to try to play a team that we know we're going to get a win for, and, and that's something that you've always believed in. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a happy medium between both, right? You, you want to try to gain confidence, especially in our conference, going into the conference, but you also want to give yourselves a challenge because if you don't, then you, you end up selling yourself short in, in the conference season. And, you know, the, these tough games that we deal with with Marquette and Homestead, it helps us in the long run, so it's great. Yeah, same, same question. You guys have never, I don't care where you coach, you've never shied away week one, week two to see if you can't get really good quality opponents, and this year is, is like every other year. We, we want to play the best teams we can play, and Arrowhead is one of the best teams that we can play. We have a lot of respect for them. They've got athletes all over the field. We want to play against the best we can find, and that's the way we're going to schedule it, and we're going to keep going as, as, long, as, as long as they'll continue to agree. Hey, Coach, um, last year you guys got to the state finals, and it was a heck of a game. And, and I'm wondering, as, as a team, when, when the dust settles, the leaders on this team, do they go, okay, boys, we, we know how to get there. Now let's finish the deal. Uh, they, does that, is that more of an incentive for them once the dust settles and the sadness goes away? Well, I, I think in the offseason we, we try not to focus on outcome goals at all. Okay. We, we're going to focus on process goals, and right now the next step is – at 710, our friends from Arrowhead. That's the next step in the process for us. Man, that's awesome. Great answer, guys. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Good luck tonight. Uh, boys, back to you. Marching band and our national anthem. Worship God and team. Thank you. Okay. Worship from the cross and is lucky to defend their option through the second half. Arrowhead will retreat to the game tonight team.
Before we get started, let's head to the keys of the game. Terry, what do we have tonight? Uh, for Arrowhead, it's going to wear out Homestead with their depth. They have tremendous numbers of players available. Their passing game has to be clicking, and their special teams must contribute in some way. For the Highlanders tonight, what's key? they got to run the ball consistently so they keep Homestead on the keep Arrowhead on the sidelines. Their defensive backs have to really cover that receiving core well, and they got to put some pressure on that sophomore quarterback. Keys to the game tonight. John Weiser, Terry Kelly with you. Mike McGivern on the sideline tonight. And we are set to go. Week number two of the high school football season. Friday night rivals here on My24. Glad you could be with us. Our opening kickoff tonight will be brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Arrowhead in white. Homestead in the red. Temperature in the 70s tonight. A gorgeous evening for Keeping high school football. Beautiful night. Everything we could have asked for. Andrew Whiskey and Kyle Janke standing deep to receive this kick. Sean West does the place kicking for the Highlanders. Homestead winning the toss, deferring to the second half. And West gets us underway. A low line drive to the far side, taken by Whiskey. Down the far sideline, across the 35, out to the 37-yard line. Jeff Stelts there to make the tackle for Homestead as we get a look at the Arrowhead offense to kick things off here tonight. Vance Holtz is their sophomore quarterback. He has a Drew Nagy as his running back. That receiving core dynamite. Andrew Whiskey, Kyle Janke, and Trip Walsh out there, the wide receivers. Good offensive line, big up front. They've got four players at 270 or better. First play from scrimmage from the 37. Out of the pistol, Holtz. High snap, delivers the ball, completes the far side. Out across the 43-yard line, that is once again Andrew Whiskey, second-team all-conference. Miles Kelly, the cornerback, making the stop. Here's the defense for Homestead tonight. Dix, Love, and Prunskis up front. Stelts and Wilson. Linebackers along with Walt and Smith. And then you've got Kelly, Names, Chung, all-conference here ago, and Bowers in that defensive backfield. Second and four, and it'll be a scramble to the far side. Drew Nagy, his first carry tonight, 135 yards a week ago in the victory over Marquette. Chung was there to make the stop. Jackson names on the Vance Holtz got off to a tremendous start last week in his debut, threw for three touchdown passes. Let's head downstairs, our first visit with Mike McGivern. Hey, guys, when Homestead gets the ball, their quarterback has a towel. It says LLJ. I said, hey, Sal, what does that, what does that stand for? Long live J. A really good friend of his got shot in Milwaukee and killed in May of 2021. He said, never forget, long live J. Big run here on first down, a gain of 13, and another first down. Again, first downs tonight brought to you by Best Electric Service. Best Electric Service, connect with the best. And there was a nice connection there and a nice run. Right now, Arrowhead's trying to mix it up a little bit, pass, run, trying to, you know, maybe get the uh, Homestead defense to be a little bit more alert to the run and then take advantage of the passing opportunities. Once again from the pistol is Holtz. Drew Nagy the running back. Weatherby realigns to the right side of the quarterback. High snap, Nagy up the gut inside the 30. Nagy will take it inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. Drew Nagy on the carry. Big run up the middle. Anthony Chung finally made the stop to free safety, but nothing fancy there running it right between the guards. And we talked about the Arrowhead offensive line on that left side. Sexton is at 240, McKinnon 275, Luke Aker, Iker is 240, Riley Zergible 270, and Derek Jensen 6'7", 310. 15 yard pickup inside the Salvation Army red zone. Yeah. 
Holtz with time, dumps it across the middle, completes the pass to Whiskey on a crossing route. And about the 16, just shy of the 15 yard line for a couple. Xavier Smith followed him out of the backfield, able to make the stop. Sets up a second and eight, coach. Coach Matt Wolf said Xavier Smith, you know, he's 6'1, 175, but he said pound for pound, one of the strongest people you're going to run into with unbelievable speed. Second and long. From the Homestead 15, Nagy, not much running room there. Got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard before he has stacked up and stopped at that point. A whole host of red-shirted Highlanders there to make the play on defense, setting up a third and long for the Warhawks. Defensive coordinator Matt Wolf knew he was going to have to do some stunting that they did that time to shot a backer into the backfield. They've got to find some way to negate that size advantage that Arrowhead has. Call it third and seven here for Arrowhead. They'll line up two receivers here to the near side in the slot. That is Trip Walsh. Again, Holtz working from the pistol with Nagy in the backfield. Has some time over the middle, and it's incomplete. Intended for Walsh, who was lined up in the slot. Anthony Chung was out there as well defensively for the Highlanders. It'll set up fourth down, and it looks like a field goal opportunity here for Arrowhead. Well, both teams have excellent kickers. Uh, Sean Jockums for Arrowhead was an honorable mention all-conference selection. We saw him as they were warming up, hitting from 45 yards out. This will be a 32-yard attempt straight on. Wyatt McKinnon, the long snapper. Nick Sinelli, the holder. Plenty of distance. And it is good. And Arrowhead on the opening drive gets a 32-yard field goal to take the early 3-0 lead. You can see how Jockums gets that ball up nice and high. Nobody's going to block that just by jumping up in the air, batting it down. Good return off that kickoff, set up the drive. They were able to convert a couple of big plays. Nagy with a couple of big runs on that drive. Islander defense able to buckle it up. Close captioning tonight is brought to you by LifeLock. That's LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Drake Zortman, the head coach for the Highlanders there in the huddle. The headset on. He and defensive coordinator Matt Wolf, longtime roommates through the years. I'll tell you what, there's a that combination. Their sense of humor is something else. Again, it's time for our Menards kickoff. Save big money at Menards. Jockums, who just hit that 32-yard field goal, tees it up at the 40. Drew Wilson and Anthony Chung standing deep, a pair of seniors for the Highlanders. And this will be Wilson with Chung in front. Staggers across the 15 to the 17 yard line. A 16 yard return. Brady Carpenter there to make the stop for Arrowhead. So we'll get our first look at the Highlanders on offense here tonight. Like what we saw in practice the other day, Coach. Sal Balistrieri, the quarterback, second team all conference, the senior. Two for five last week, but ran for 64 yards and a touchdown. There's the offense led by Balistrieri, Don Bruno. Getting the start this year as a junior, 21 carries a week ago for 119 yards. Very good offensive line. Headed up by Brady Buttermore, the right tackle, the leader of that offensive line. Well, Drake Zortman said if he had his way, he'd like to have an 80-20 ratio of run to pass. We'll see whether that's something Arrowhead is going to allow him to do. And this will be the quarterback draw here. The read play that time between Balistrieri and Bruno. Balistrieri kept it for a couple. 
Well, Fritz Rauch, a name well known around Wisconsin as an outstanding defensive coordinator, was anticipating a heavy dose of Ballesteri carrying the ball. Jacob Weida, honorable mention all-conference, making the tackle on Ballesteri. Second down at eight for the Highlanders. Again, we were told we would see a lot of this tonight, too. They'll check off on the wristbands, get in formation, and then they'll look to the sideline for any change in that call. Bruno, left side. Struggles forward across the 20, maybe the 22-yard line. Game of about three on the play. Terrell Thomas making the stop as we check out the defense for Arrowhead tonight. Gilbert, Thomas, Conda, and Woida up front. Hartzell and Curry, the Bash brothers in there at linebacker. And then you have the secondary of Carnell and Mater along with Foley and Carpenter. Third and five here for Homestead. Bellis Drury wants to throw, looking right, now scrambles. And he will get met at the 25, maybe the 26, short of the first down. Brought down by Jaden Rouser, the outside linebacker here on the near side. You can see Jace Gilbert get in there well, the defensive end. He's only a junior, 6'5", 260. He's got an offer from Central Michigan already. So Homestead, their first drive ends in a punt attempt here. Sean West does all the kicking here. He will punt. Andrew Whiskey, dangerous man inside his own 30, awaiting the kick. And we have a timeout taken by Arrowhead. Well, head coach Matt Harris is also the special teams coach, and so he must have seen something he didn't like. We'll step out and take a break as well. 6.02 remaining first quarter, 3 nothing lead for Arrowhead on my 24. today or yesterday from the from the Blackhawks I got an email from the Blackhawks for two preseason games against St. Louis and Detroit all lower level seats 20 bucks Weeknights, watch two of your favorite television families for some dinnertime delights. First, it's an hour of the Goldbergs at 5, then catch the Baxters on Last Man Standing at 6, right here on My24. John Weiser, Terry Kelly, Mike McGivern in our My24 sports crew tonight from Homestead. High school, 3-0 Arrowhead. Homestead in punt formation here. Arrowhead taking the timeout. Whiskey standing at his 30-yard line, awaiting the punt from Sean West. And it's end-over-end end kick that will take a bounce at the 40. And will roll dead at the 34-yard line. Let's head to the sideline in Mike McGivern. Coaches at Homestead said, boys, look, first uh, first drive jitters. We're going to just settle down, make sure we're wrapping up. Hey, we're, we've made all the right reads on the, on the passes, but the runs, we've been wrong a couple of times. So let's go back to our base. And, guys, let's wrap up and rip the ball out. A couple of, couple of guys might be loose with the ball. Make sure we wrap up and, loose, and, and see if we can get, grab the ball from the running backs from Arrowhead. Boys, back to you. Turnover's a key last week in the victory over Germantown. It was that late interception. 
that carried uh, Homestead to victory in that contest, sealed the victory, and they stuffed the run that time. A lot of red shirts on that football defensively for Homestead. Now, last week, Griffin Bowers picked off a pass, took it 85 yards for a touchdown. That fourth proved th- to be the game winner because Germantown came back and scored late in that fourth quarter with under a minute left. Gain of one by Nagy. It'll be second and nine for Arrowhead. Trips here to the near side. Single receiver far side is Whiskey. And they will hand it off. Nagy, nowhere to go up the middle, and he's brought down from behind. Nice defensive play by Drew Wilson, inside linebacker and all-conference all player a year ago. Last year, Wilson had 138 tackles on the season. I'll let you know how busy that young man is. <laughs> Textbook wrap-up here. Got him up from behind, pulled him down. Lost back to the 33-yard line. It'll bring up third and 11. Holtz on the scramble now. Has some running room. Oh, and he is hammered at the 38-yard line once again by Drew Wilson. Wow, what a hit there. That was all 6-4, 208 in a hurry that time on the quarterback, Holtz. Wilson's got a preferred walk-on offer from Minnesota. You can see why people are looking at him. One of the little wrinkles they did that last time, they took their outside linebacker, Jet Stilts, put him as an end pass situation, got into kind of a nickel look. Sean Jockums will do the punting. Standing deep on punt return. Dom Bruno, starting running back, also returns punts for the Highlanders. Good kick by Jockums. Bruno muffed it. It's loose on the turf. And it's recovered by Homestead back at the 15-yard line. An excellent hang time on that punt. Set up that... uh, I guess you could call problem that time for Bruno. Miles Kelly on the punt return. We'll step aside right now for a message from the folks at Landmark Credit Union. Welcome to tonight's game. I'm Ryan Hesfrick, Mequon Branch Manager with Landmark Credit Union. Once again, Landmark Credit Union is proud to be a sponsor of the Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week on My24. We're proud to show our support for local schools and to give back to the communities we serve. At Landmark Credit Union, our job is to be there for our members for every Landmark moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, we can help. Visit us online or at one of over 30 branches, including locations near the two schools playing tonight. You can learn more at LandmarkCU.com. Our first penalty of the night coming on the snap here following the punt. Excellent coverage on that punt for Arrowhead. But penalty. Guy Give coming down, down, covering that punt, timed it up perfectly so he didn't interfere with the fair Most catch opportunity. Forced the ball to be fumbled, but that pushed Homestead back closer to their own goal line. Following the penalty, first down and 15. So sets up first and 15. And for a team... Depending on the run, you don't want to get behind the chains here against this Arrowhead defense. Balistrieri, nothing up the middle. Just got back to the line of scrimmage. Bakari Kanda there to make the stop. Defensive lineman is six foot, 265 pound. Senior. Yeah, right next to him is Terrell Thomas in the middle there, 6'4", 270. All-conference performer from a year ago. Jace Gilbert on the outside, whom we've already mentioned, and Jacob Woida, 6'2", 245 at the other defensive end. 
It's going to be a, a load for Charlie Cobbs, the center, 6'3", 290, having to move one of those guys out of the way. Throwing here, coming out, a wheel route, makes the catch across midfield, down the near sideline and brought down. Beautiful throw, Will Van Lannen with the catch. Connor Foley caught him from behind. Balasturi dropped oh. that ball in beautifully. See if we can get another look at this. What touch on that ball. Balasturi just avoided the rush of Ben Hartzell coming in on a blitz. Will Van Lanen, 5'9", junior, with the catch and a best electric first down. First venture into Arrowhead territory tonight. Bruno trying to get the edge left side. Penalty marker down. He'll take it to the 37-yard line, but this will be coming back for a hold. Number three, Jaden Hauser was uh, practicing to be a lawyer as he was talking to the official, <laughs> trying to sell the idea that he'd been held, and the official agreed. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. Ten yards from the spot of the foul will move the football back to the Highlander 48-yard line. Just over two minutes to go here in the first. A first drive 32-yard field goal, giving Arrowhead the early lead here. Balistrieri on a draw. Maybe a couple to midfield. Brought down from behind, Jacob Woida. Defensive end on that near side, able to make the stop. Well, Arrowhead's really keed in on watching Ballasturi because they know how he likes to run on a set play like a quarterback power and how he'll scramble, take off. Again, you'll see this. The offense will get to the line of scrimmage, check out the defensive formation, check down on their wristband, and then look to the sideline if there are any changes. And we got movement on that far side. Wide receiver Jonah Wensler. Oh, sir. On the offense. Five yards. Repeat second down. Jumped the gun just a little bit. Second penalty on this drive against the Highlanders. Make the third penalty on third. this drive. Yeah, that combination with the holding penalty kind of takes away from that wonderful pass play mm -hmm. Balasquiri had. Drake Zortman with the headset on there, the head coach. Turns this into a second and 26. Need to get to the 29 yard line. Ellis Drury airs it out. Has a man. Beautiful catch once again. Van Lanen inside the 40. Gets most of that back. It'll set up a manageable third down. Third and 10. Another beautifully thrown ball. And an equally nice catch by Van Lanen. Connor Foley there to make the stop. Yeah, last week, Ballas Drury only threw five passes total. And so you can see that uh, maybe Arrowhead were underselling how well he could throw it. Again, this season we're going to highlight our hit of the game, and that's brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. Third and ten, Balistrieri on a draw. Gets it back to the 35-yard line. This will be an interesting call here, fourth and five. You were talking about the special teams and especially the place kicker for Homestead. Pretty strong leg. Yeah, Sean West, just like his counterpart for for Homestead, uh, Mr. Jockham, both honorable mention all-conference performers last year uh, for their respective teams. And that'll end our first quarter. So we'll give Drake Zortman a chance to think about it here. His team down by three. This is the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union.
MTV Video Music Awards. Nicki Minaj, LL Cool J, and Jack Harlow host the Star Studded Music Event this Sunday at 6 p.m. That's what you were looking for then, before. Courtney and the Justice Society keep their friends close and frenemies closer with the season premiere of DC's Star Girl. Good job, Wednesday Amen. night at 7, followed by the season finale of Wellington we'll Paranormal. We'll see you doing good. You good job oh, or not. I know you've got a lot to live Community Advocates believes our community thrives when we work together for good. Discover how your house yeah. furthers the cause and can help support vital programs. Okay. And they told us that he was going to wear the 66 this week. Okay. I think they're going just hang on. Let me get everything set. He's hot out here, man. I'm sweating, but I'm working. I'm working. No, he had two numbers. Congratulations to Homestead's Anthony Chung for his accomplishments. He is now in the running to receive part of $5,000 in scholarship funds provided by our partners at GlaxoSmithKline. And now, get on your feet. Highlanders are going to go for it here on fourth down. Balistrieri on the scramble. And he'll go down on a sack. Jacob Waita. Big play. Down on, the play by Jacob Waita. on defense on the fourth down sack thwarts the drive. Waita had nine tackles mm -hmm. last week against Marquette. Put a lot of pressure on their quarterback. Duplicated that today. Yeah, from what, what I've understood, I think uh, the quarterback for Marquette is still seeing him running after him. Probably having nightmares. So Arrowhead will take over on downs at their own 44-yard line. Early here in the second quarter, up by three. Nagy and Weatherby in the backfield. Nagy gets the call. And Nagy is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Drew Nagy on the carry. Looked like both Wilson and Wolt were both there. Led the way. Homestead playing out of a 3-4 defense. Yeah. Uh, not only doing blitzing, they're doing some stemming, trying to get the linemen goofed up on the blocking calls, and they're also doing some slanting because they don't want to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that big offensive line of Arrowhead. We saw that last week. Franklin had much success doing that in the season opener. Nothing there. And down he goes. A loss of seven back to the 40-yard line. Aiden Prunskis, the senior, read that beautifully. Aiden Prunskis with the tackle. A couple years ago, defensive coordinator, I remember Matt Wolf said, no, nah, I won't blitz much in the game we televised. They were coming almost every play, and so he's worked out some some exotic blitzes as well. So it's a game of chess right yep. now. Well, third and long now. Plus marks on the 41-yard line. Third and 14. It's third down. Two by two of the receiving core here for Arrowhead. Holtz with time. Holtz waiting. And down he goes. Ran out of time. Nick Wolt able to run him down and make the play. Looked like Holtz had some time, but it quickly closed as he reached the near sideline. Now, once again, Homestead came with that nickel look, and they took Jet Stelts, put him out as a defensive end, helped put more pressure on. Arrowhead picked it up well, but good coverage downfield by the Homestead defensive backfield. Sean Jockums in to punt. Don Bruno standing at his own 25-yard line. Kick it away from Bruno. 
Takes a favorable homestead bounce to the 32-yard line. That's where the Highlanders will take it as we head down to the sideline. And Mike. Guys, offensively, uh, here on the homestead sideline, they're talking about identifying where the, the blitz is coming from. They do need to do a better job of communicating up and down the line and making sure that they continue uh, block, as far as their blocks, their, their pad, pad levels a little bit high, and they need to finish their blocks. Communication is a key on the sidelines here on homestead. Mike, thank you very much. Hey, when we get a touchdown tonight, it's not just a touchdown. It's a Planet Fitness touchdown. Brought to you by Planet Fitness, your judge-free zone. 3 nothing Arrowhead. First quarter, first drive, 32-yard field goal. The only scoring so far. Sal Balistrieri has them set. Don Bruno in the backfield. They'll bring the receiver in motion. Van Lanen, they'll try and run jet sweep, and nothing there. Van Lanen wrapped up behind the line. Jacob Woida again. Three big stops tonight by Woida off that defensive end spot. Well, one of the things Homesteader wants to do off that jet sweep look is they want to fake the jet sweep, then have Balistrieri take that ball up the middle. But if you can't get the sweep to work, you're not going to have a chance to run that companion play. Van Lanen with a couple of big catches here in this first half, but a loss of six here on the sweep. Second and 16. And the quarterback, I believe, caught that with his knee on the turf. Knee on the turf, I believe, so he was down. James Schaefer is our referee tonight. This crew from the Fox Valley tonight out of Green Bay and Kimberly. Packers weren't busy tonight, so they had free time. Very professional yes. group, by the way. They yes. uh, will keep this game in under control. So a loss of one brings third and 17 here for the Highlanders. Wensler is lined up as the receiver here near side. Three receivers to the far side, including Van Lanen. And it'll be Balistrieri. Big hole up the middle, Balistrieri. Across midfield. They will not catch Balistrieri. Oh, they did. Tripped up by the shoelaces. Side of the five-yard line. Heads up play. Connor Foley didn't give up. Took a swipe, got the shoelace, and saved a touchdown. We talked about Balistrieri. They want to get him isolated, going up the gut. He was a track man last year, excellent sprinter. Put that speed to good use. Foley dive, just got that toe. <laughs> Ellis, the Salvation Army red zone. Whenever a team reaches the inside the opponent's 20, they enter the Salvation Army red zone. Salvation Army doing the most good, again, to volunteer or donate. Go online to samilwaukee.org. Full house backfield here on first and goal from the five. It's Bruno cut down at the two. Looked like it was Connor Foley again who got in there and knifed him down. Well, defensive coordinator Fritz Rauch is known for his 4-4, but he's been alternating between a 3-4, even had looked like a little of a 3-5 look in passing situations. You saw that time Homestead get into a full house backfield. Some of the old people watching the show remember what that is, the T formation. Yep. But they've got all kinds of little cross buck action that they do, little traps. Interesting to watch. Bruno, left side, second effort, spin, touchdown, Homestead. Our first Planet Fitness touchdown of the night. Good second effort here, Coach. Yeah, you hit, spins, gets his pad level down. First year starter for the Highlanders. First lead of the night here for the Highlanders. Sean West to tack on the extra point. Aiden Klieger is the long snapper. Van Lane in the holder. Slow on that, it was blocked. Extra point blocked. Remains a 6-3 game. We'll head downstairs to Mike. 
So, guys, uh, Mark Showalter, he is Salvation Army, Ozaki County, 40 years he's been doing this. First, thank you so much for the service. 40 years, incredible. It's, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun, very rewarding. Man, no doubt, in this servant leadership heart that you have. So right now, Salvation Army, I, I know it's so nice out. We're not thinking about winter and Christmas, but you're, you're looking for bell ringers. We are. Uh, we start uh, November 12th as the first day we can ring. Uh, all is looking for uh, ringers, looking for groups to ring. We do have a website called uh, registertoring.com. Um, I would say after October 15th, people could go on there and, and, and find a location to ring. Um, we are looking to get into the mequon Thienesville area. Um, we don't have a big presence here, so we're looking for ringers, especially in these communities, um, also someone to, to coordinate the ringing. Man, Mark, you know what? Let's get that to happen because I'm a big fan of what you guys do. He is Mark Showalter, Salvation Army, Ozaki County. It's nice to meet you, sir. Thank you very much. You bet. You. Boys, back to you. Mike Showalter, thank you. Mike, thank you as we've had a – 6-3 lead now for Homestead. It was Thomas Curry who blocked that extra point right up the middle. One of the Bash brothers. Yeah. Curry also an excellent baseball player. Oh, yeah. Used that big reach of his to knock that down. Once again, time for our Menards kickoff. Brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Weskey and Janky standing deep. This will scoot into the end zone away from Whiskey on the touchback. Arrowhead ball at the 20-yard line. Midway through this second quarter and toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight. Reminiscent of last week's game between Catholic Memorial and Franklin. Again, close captioning tonight brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock identity theft protection starts here. Drake Sortman talking things over to with his special teams, Sean West, the kicker. From the 20 yard line, Arrowhead trailing for the first time tonight. Holtz wants to throw, dumps it out short. Tried to throw it out to the flat that time. Intended for whiskey. Jet Stouts was out there defensively for the Highlanders. Watching Vance Holtz warm up in practice today and right before the game, I, I told you I, I really love the, the ball he throws and drops it in there nicely. Has a very good arm. Nagy, left side. Across the 25 to the 27. Drew Nagy, brought down by Kentral Evans. A gain of... Seven sets up third and three now for the Warhawks. Playoff team a year ago opened up with a high scoring affair against Kenosha Bradford. Bradford gave them all they could take in that first round. Again, Arrowhead will check off on the wristband. See if Homestead is bluffing here on their blitz or whether they're actually going to bring it. They are going to bring it, and he gets it away. High throw. Whiskey brings it down out to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of eight and a first down. Miles Kelly there to make the stop. One of the Arrowhead assistant coaches, Chris Harriet, is also the head track coach. Arrowhead was the state Division I champion last year, and Coach Harriet wanted me to know before the game, anybody you see touching the ball, He's a trackster. A lot of those guys, Weskey, Walsh, Nagy, were all part of a 4x1 or 4x2 relay team last year. And it warms the heart of one Terry Kelly. Marriage of track and football. Can't run, you can't play. <laughs> I would agree. And Holtz with time. This time through the hands of the intended receiver, Weatherby, the fullback. Wolt was out there in coverage. Brings up second and ten. Nick Holtz on the coverage. Second down. Only, only trouble for Homestead if they have that three-man front and only bring the three guys. 
it gives Vance Holtz a lot of time to find his receivers. Nagy over the left side out to the 40, maybe the 41 yard line. Good run there. Anthony Three, Chung Three. there to bring him down. Now bring up third and short now, third and about four here for Arrowhead. Okay, and we mentioned line. Chung in our uh, players to watch. 4.48 GPA. I think if you took this whole booth, I don't know if we could put together a 4.48 GPA. Andy might have to carry us on that one. Third and four. Four-man front, making a five-man front here for the Highlanders. They'll try and run left side. They read it out. Nagy stopped behind the line, back to the 38, a loss of three. Walt there to make the stop. Yeah, Walt got a lot of playing time last year, was one of their leading tacklers, and you can see his presence being felt this evening. Good speed coming from inside. Well, he was able to shed that block and full barrel that time to take Nagy down for the loss once again. Sean Jockums out Sean to punt. Don Bruno. He is standing at the 25. Kicking it away from Bruno once again, and this will angle out of bounds near the 36-yard line is where they will spot it. We will take a break. 3.25 to go here in the first half. A good one tonight. On the North Shore, Homestead ahead of Arrowhead, our Friday night rivals on My 24. Courtney and the Justice Society are keeping their friends close and frenemies closer. Who can be trusted? Well, find out on an all-new season of DC's Star Girl. New episodes premiere Wednesdays at 7 on CW18. With Mike McGivern and Terry Kelly, John Weiser with you on a gorgeous night here at Homestead High School in a dandy football game. Late here in the second quarter, 6-3, the Highlanders lead. Taking over at their 36 yard line following the punt. Balistrieri with a 70 yard run that set up their touchdown. He'll pitch to Bruno. Good speed around the edge, and he'll get four, maybe five out of that. Don Bruno is 5'8, 160. Brought down by Connor Foley. It was Foley who tripped up Balistrieri at the five-yard line on that 70-yard run. Gain of four, second and six. And again, Bruno, this time he is stuffed. Nowhere to go. Looked like it was Roida again in on that stop. He's had four or five tackles tonight, two of them for loss, including a sack. Now there was that full house backfield once again. There's a little wrinkle that we'll see later in the game that Homestead likes to use off that full house. This might not be the right time for it, but we'll see what happens. 
third and six here, just shy of their own 40-yard line. Wensler is split here to the near side, trips to the right side, single back is Bruno. And they'll give it to Bruno, and Bruno will only get a couple out to the 41-yard line. Once again to the sideline we go. Mike, what do you have? Hey, guys, obviously the defensive coaching staff here at Homestead pretty happy so far. Said, boys, if we have to get out of the field one more time, make sure we continue to do what we're doing. Don't want to give up a cheap one before the half. They're fired up, feeling pretty good about how they're playing right now, guys. Matt Wolf, the defensive coordinator for Homestead. He was he was pretty confident. He liked uh, practice uh, the other day we were at, and uh, he was very confident, very upbeat about his defense. He really likes his defensive side. Right, and he, he had spent a number of years working with Fritz Rauch. Yes. Who, you know, who had been the defensive coordinator here and he'd been an assistant under Fritz. And so... A lot of those same principles. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, the National Guard Halftime Report will highlight this week's Scholar Athlete nominee and meet our landmark Booster of the Game recipient. That's all coming up at the half. Brought to you by the Wisconsin Army National Guard. Arrowhead taking a timeout here on defense, trying to save some time here. Just over two minutes to go in this first half. Well, Arrowhead's got the ability for some, mm -hmm. you know, big play strikes with those receivers. Trip Walsh is 6'5", gives him great advantage. High jumper and triple jumper in track. Kyle Yonke is one of the best so hurdlers in the state. He's got 6'2 height. Weske, we've talked about. He's got a couple of receptions already this evening. Sean West to punt. Andrew Weske standing at his own 25. Got that one nicely away. Takes a beautiful bounce. Whiskey will let it roll inside the five. They will down it just shy of the one. 58-yard punt. No return. Down inside the two. And Arrowhead backed up here with under two minutes to play in the half. Let's see what offensive coordinator Kyle Burlingame comes up with here. He and Matt Harris plotting this out. Well, Coach Burlingame felt this is the best receiving core mm -hmm. they've had at Arrowhead. And Coach Harris has never been reluctant to throw uh, the ball when he was at Waukesha North. Uh, Shamiri Dickey, who is now with the Badgers. Mm -hmm. This will be a run just getting out of the end zone and back to the line of scrimmage is Nagy. On a little bit of a delayed handoff, Monte Love, the nose tackle, making the stop for Homestead. Kind of a fire plug, 5'11", mm. 250, 240 with uh, Aiden Prunskis and Charlie Dix, 215. So they don't have quite the size, Arrowhead, but they're moving well. And those linebackers, Wilson and Wolt, behind them can help really close that middle down. I look for Homestead if they get a stop here to maybe take a timeout themselves here. Again, they'll give it to Nagy. And Nagy again as he stacked he got up. Out. No signal yet. And they gave him forward progress. They did just out of the end zone. I mean just out. That knows the football just across the goal line. We'll take another look. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the loss back to the one. I'm surprised Homestead hasn't taken a timeout here. Last thing you want to do is give up a big play here, and I think Arrowhead, thinking the same, might be trying to draw them offside. Back judge is counting here. Not going to get the playoff. Up. 
So Arrowhead also going to take their final timeout here. Let's see. They it do. Was Arrowhead. Yep. Arrowhead did take it. Yep. So Arrowhead out of timeouts and. This will give Matt Wolf a chance to talk to his defense here on this near sideline. He's in the black shirt with the headset in the middle of that huddle. I think Drake Zortman still talking about that first down, or second down play where he didn't quite get out of the end zone. Now this is where you've got to be careful, though, if you're Homestead, to get a one-on-one matchup with a couple of those mm-hmm. tall, fast receivers. Suddenly... You know, you might be 99 yards away from the other goal line, but that can be covered quickly. There you see Matt Wolf instructing his defense. He and Drake go way back. Over 20 years, yep. and uh, they said when Drake was engaged to get married, that's when they had to break up the, the roomies. The odd couple had to <laughs> separate. Third down from just inside the one. And again, Nagy fighting his way forward, got out of the end zone. And Homestead will take a timeout here with 10 seconds to play. I believe it was Charlie Dix over here on the left side, the left defensive end that made the stop. So at the very least, with the timeout, Arrowhead's punter, Sean Jockums, will have to kick it out of the back of his own end zone here. An entertaining first half. Arrowhead scoring on their opening drive and a couple of big running plays by Nagy, but since that time, the Highlander defense has really buckled down, and they've done an excellent job shutting Nagy down and putting some pressure on Holtz, preventing him from... Too much time and connecting with that fine receiving core. Well, it's been a combination of the stemming, slanting, the blitzes. Now, right now, if uh, special teams coach Mike Adams has got a punt block worked out, (laughs) I imagine he'd love to see that come into play here. Also have to be careful for your Jockums not to take a step back over that end line. A lot of pressure on this youngster right now. And on the long snapper. (laughs) Wyatt McKinnon is the long snapper for this Arrowhead team. Here they come, and it's a quick kick to get it out of there. We'll take a knuckling bounce out of bounds near the 35-yard line with three seconds remaining in the half. Time to run off one more play here. Circle wheel out. No. <laughs> yeah. I used to say, you know, Homestead. You could expect it any time, right? Homestead could be on their own three, and all of a sudden you're going to see curl wheel. Yeah, they'll do it out of a full house backfield. At this point in time, with how deep they're playing, that one's not going to work. But uh, Just thought I'd throw that out there. I know. Well, Van Lennon's gotten himself free for a couple of receptions this evening, so we'll have to see if they figure they can isolate him. I was also just checking to see if Mr. Basham might be watching tonight. He's probably (laughs) saying the same thing. Yes. (laughs) Hopefully he's watching. I think he is. Well, they're going to throw it here. Just heave it up. And it's broken up inside the 10, and that will end our first half. Brady Mater able to jump in front of the intended receiver. Jonah Wensler, and so the half will end. Homestead, second quarter touchdown tonight over the Arrowhead Warhawks, 6-3. Stay tuned. The Wisconsin National Guard halftime report comes your way next. You're watching Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union.
Welcome back to our Wisconsin National Guard halftime report here on my 24 6 3 ball game in favor of the homestanding Homestead Highlanders. Time now to bring you our Scholar Athlete of the Night here. And tonight we'd like to highlight our Scholar Athlete nominee brought to you by the great folks at GlaxoSmithKline. And from Homestead High School, it's Anthony Chung. Anthony participates football, basketball, and baseball. Carries a 4.445 cumulative GPA. He has a schedule that is full of AP and honor level courses. As a junior, Anthony was selected honorable mention all conference in baseball and second team all conference in football. He gives back to the community by volunteering at St. Ben's as well as with the guest house shelters food service. According to Coach Zortman, he is a three sport athlete who doesn't simply participate but is a leader and high-level performer in all three sports and always has a smile on his face. So congratulations to Anthony Chung, our winner this week of our Schuyler Athlete nominee. Our weekly nominees will be in the running to receive a part of a $5,000 in scholarship funds provided by the great folks at Glaxo Smith Klein. 6-3 in favor of the Homestead Highlanders. Let's head to the sideline and Mike McGivern with our landmark booster of the week. break we'll return with more of our wisconsin army national guard halftime report here from homestead high school right after this Hey guys, thank you very much. You know, our part. Welcome back to our Wisconsin Army National Guard halftime report. Little technical glitch before we went to break, so let's try this again. We'll head to Mike McGivern for our Landmark Credit Booster of the Week award. Hey guys, thank you very much. You know, our partners at Landmark Credit Union are proud to serve and support our local communities. And tonight, we are so honored to recognize an individual who has consistently shown his incredible support for high school athletics here 
at Homestead. At this time, I am proud to introduce Landmark Credit Union's Booster Club person of the game, charter member of the Homestead Athletic Booster Club. He's Tom Volke. Tom is a token of Landmark's appreciation for your hard work and dedication. They would like to present you with a gift along with a $500 donation to the Booster Club in your name so that you and others like you can continue to support the great things that Booster Clubs do for our student athletes. On behalf of everyone at Landmark Credit Union, we say thank you. Tom, how long have you been doing this, by the way? I've been doing this now for 38 years, running the clock for all levels of high school, uh, Homestead High School football. So what makes you do that? 38 years is a long time to be consistently here every week for, for football. What, what, uh, what makes you do it? Well, the love of the kids and watching them play and uh, supporting the Homestead the Athletic Department. I'm going to tell you, guys like Ryan, who is my co-host here, and he says exactly what I need him to say, they're going to give you a 500, the Booster Club, $500 in your name. Ryan, thanks a lot. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Tom. There, there it is. He's Ryan. He's my uh, my new co-host on this. Boys, back to you. And Mike, thank you so much. 6-3, our score here tonight between uh, Homestead and Arrowhead. The Highlanders with that lead, and through the magic of television, and all the magical that we do, now we go back downstairs to Mike McGivern once again. Mike, what do you have? Hey, no magic. I'm just that quick, John. <laughs> hey, I'm with a specialist Obergon, Wisconsin Army National Guard. Prior to this, she was in the Marines for four years, and I have my grandson Keegan here as well. And I wanted a specialist Obergon to talk a little bit to Keegan about, as he gets older, why it would be important for him to, to give back and, and possibly uh, go into the National Guard. So, Keegan, if you're looking at joining a service and you want to do something a little bit more part-time, serve your country and also serve your state, the National Guard's going to be the branch for you to give you that flexibility. Hey, guys, here's the story I love most. I said, why the Marines? She said, you know what, I graduated from high school early. I walked in. I said, go big or go home. I'm going in the Marines. And her daughter and her daughter, her sister did the same thing. So, hey, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You bet. Boys, back to you. Halftime continues here at Homestead right after this. You're watching Friday Night Rivals on My24. The Wisconsin Army National Guard halftime report rolls on here at Homestead High School. We head downstairs. Time now for a United States Marine Corps interview. Once again, here's Mike. Hey, guys, I'm here with uh, Major Blackwell. U.S. Marines, 
Look, if, if you said, hey, give us a poster of a U.S. Marine, here's the guy right here. Hey, thank you so much for your service, 19 years. Um, can I ask you, when you're talking to student athletes about becoming a Marine, what do you tell them? I tell them it's a great opportunity. Uh, it's a good good place to serve. Uh, and if you're not real sure what you want to do right after high school, which most of our youth are not, but you want some development before you uh, invest a lot of money maybe to go to college, uh, we have a, we have good opportunities, lots of certification. Go learn about yourself, learn about the world, and uh, give back to your community. Hey, guys, when he played football, he was a receiver. I said, you were one of those pretty boys? He goes, yeah, maybe, a little bit. Hey, I really appreciate what you do for our country and, and the fact that you get to t talk to student athletes, hopefully on a daily basis. This was a good decision for you. Absolutely. Great, great decision for me. Um, I, every, everything that I have right now, you know, my, my path, uh, Marine Corps paid for my college. I've had uh, uh, all the opportunities because of that. I can retire when I'm 41 uh, and then get back on the football field and coach, hopefully. Man. Hey, thanks again. It's good seeing you. you all right, sir. Thank you. Back to you. Mike, thank you. And Major Blackwell, we thank you as well. Time now for our highlights from this first half. Well, if you're into defensive plays and big hits, we got a lot of them for you here tonight. Look at this. A couple of nice plays by Drew Wilson on defense for Homestead tonight. We're still looking for our hit of the game and I believe this is uh, that's it. That might be it right there. Mr. That's Wilson a, once yep. again making his presence felt but arrowhead also with a couple of nice plays jacob Woida with a couple of sacks and tackle for losses tonight and again a nice play here tracking down the quarterback is nick wolt able to pull holtz down for a loss nicely done and our one big play here tonight and that was the quarterback 70 yard run by balistrieri right up the middle it was a lone big play tonight. Got tripped up at the five-yard line. Connor Foley never gave up on the play. Two plays later, it's Don Bruno spinning his way into the end zone. The extra point was blocked. And after Earl had taken a 3-0 lead early on a 32-yard field goal, it's a 6-3 ball game in favor of Homestead. Let's head downstairs. Time now for our Carthage College interview. Mr. Kenosha, Greg Huss, is with Mike McGivern. He is Mr. Kenosha, and we were talking about, look, for in incoming freshmen are starting to move in now. And I said, any tears? He goes, some of the moms. I go, I, maybe I cried a little bit. My daughter Katie went, but maybe not. Hey, when you talk to kids that are seniors now, going to start, they're starting to apply, correct? They're applying right now, yep. Now's the perfect time to start applying. It opens up opportunities for more scholarships the earlier they apply as well. Hey, Greg, do you ever take, um, you know, look, when you're inside the bubble all the time, you don't know what people think. And Carthage has such a great reputation and such a wonderful campus. I hope you guys never take that for granted. No, we love our campus. We're located just a mile north of Kenosha, and we're right on Lake Michigan. So a lot of the buildings, a lot of the residence halls overlook Lake Michigan. It's a beautiful place to be for four years. Hey, brother, it's really good to see you again. Man, we have, we have a lot of fun when we do this, and you do a great job. And, and, and again, thank you so much for what Carthage does. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. We, we love being here. You bet. Boys, back to you. We love having grass, but right here. But next time, bring back uh, Dustin Haas, would you please? We'll go to break. Second half coming your way next here on My24.
Before we get started here with our second half, let's get a chance to meet one of our new sponsors this year on uh, Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals, presented by Landmark Credit Union, Best Electric. Mike, what do you have? You know, here with Bruce Janicek, Best Electric, and he said, look, my wife's really happy right now because we're doing it now, but she <laughs> just came up here. Hey, Bruce, thanks again for being part of uh, Friday Night Rivals. It was so important for you to be part of this and, and the community-driven part of this, very important to Best Electric. It is. Community guy, I'm a sports guy. People have been so good to us. It's a family business, and I just enjoy the heck out of hanging out here. Hey, um, and you're still repping. I think last time I said when you were repping, but you're still repping basketball, correct? I do basketball. Right now I do field hockey. I'm a, I'm a signer for the state of Wisconsin, and I also do girls lacrosse. I do three sports. Guys, there you go. Best Electric. When you talk about Best Electric, the owner, he loves stuff like this, and that's really important to have sponsors that believe in grassroots, community-driven type programs like Bruce Janising from Best Electric. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. This is awesome. Back to you, boys. Best Electric Service, connect with the best. We're glad to have you on board this year. Great sponsors, and you can see his excitement about uh, bringing this event to the public, and also you can see the pride he takes in his company. Excellent game here as we get set for the second half. 6-3 Homestead. Three-yard touchdown run by Don Bruno. After a 70-yard sprint by Balistrieri, got tripped up at the five. Two plays later, gave Homestead their only lead so far. And they will get the ball to start this second half. It's always interesting to see which teams do really well in that third quarter. Arrowhead was known last year as a great second quarter team. So it would be interesting to see tonight what happened at halftime, what kind of adjustments have been made. Second half kickoff brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Jockums with a huge kick. And he'll run it off the goal line. Weatherby breaks a tackle. Weatherby down the near sideline. Weatherby out of bounds at the 45-yard line. They'll mark him out short of the 40, excuse me. They'll mark him at the 38, a 37-yard return. Check that Drew Wilson on the return. Let you know the kind of speed that they have at linebacker to see him also be someone returning kicks. Has a preferred walk-on offer at Minnesota, does Wilson. That'll get the boat rowing up there. So an excellent return out to the 39-yard line. Sal Balistrieri, the senior quarterback. We'll have Bruno in the backfield along with Will Van Lanen. Actually a full house backfield here from under center. Van Lanen gets the call around the edge, left side. Van Lanen looks like he'll have enough for a first down out near midfield. Good strong run by Van Lanen. Had a couple of nice pass catches in that first quarter tonight. Now showing his ability on the ground. You can see that cross buck fake to the right. Give it to the back, crossing behind, going to the left. Arrowhead, Wait a Arrowhead in that 4-4 defense to start this half. Jacob Weida actually chased him down from behind. That's a best electric service first down to start this second half. Now they'll go with Bruno as the single back. Balistrieri working from the pistol. Mix up on the handoff exchange. And Balistrieri's going to go down for a two-yard loss. Bruno cut to his right. I believe the play was designed to go left. Thomas Curry, the inside linebacker, with the tackle of Balistrieri. Bring up a second and 12 for the Highlanders. Yeah, Fritz Rauch was very pleased with the tackling last week. They had seven tackles for a loss. Only thing that upset him is they didn't get any turnovers. Again, working from the pistol, this time with Bruno to the right. He'll get the ride. Bruno, excellent run. Gets some of that yardage back into Arrowhead territory to the 46. Terrell Thomas there to make the tackle. Bring up a third and manageable now. 
for this Highlander offense. Yeah, you can see Ballasturi doing a little of that read option, depending, mm -hmm. reading that defensive end. What's he going to do? Do I give the ball or do I keep it? From the 47, third down and six. Blitz coming. And both the quarterback and the running back knocked to the turf. It was Bruno who got the call. They brought the house that time. Thomas Curry with the sack. One of the Bash brothers mm -hmm. earning his name that time. One more look. No chance. Well, it started out as a promising drive here on the kickoff return. Fizzles out at midfield for Homestead. Sean West, the junior, will punt. Andrew Whiskey inside his 20. West bobbled it but got it away. Getting down to cover it and making contact with it near the 10 yard line. They'll mark it at the nine and that's where Arrowhead will start. It was CJ Young getting down there on special teams. Let's take one more look. I think we got our hit of the game brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. And here it is. Nowhere to go. That's a double hit. That could be a four minute for roughing. No. Had, hit of the game brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. Had Jace Gilbert closing in from the outside on that as well. Thanks to the Milwaukee Admirals for jumping on board this year. They'll mark it first and ten, Arrowhead at the, the 11. Line. Arrowhead's first possession here in the second half. They'll come out throwing. They'll complete to the far side, just shy of the 20-yard line. It's Whiskey with the catch. Out near the 18-yard line, Miles Kelly brought him down. Miles Kelly with the tackle. I want to see if Arrowhead starts... You know, maybe two wides on both sides, doing a little quick screens out there. Have the guy in front be the blocker and see if they can free up one of those outstanding receivers. Well, they'll go two by two here in the formation in the wide receiving core. Nagy, the single back behind the quarterback, Holtz. Again looks to throw, and again, short, completes the pass, close to a first down. That's Trip Walsh with the catch. That might be his second catch tonight. You can see both of them doing short patterns, one of those things to set that up, and suddenly that guy's going to block, and then the guy behind the line of scrimmage is going to catch the ball and take off. It'll be a first down, a best electric first down for the Warhawks here on their first possession of the second half. Just shy of the 25-yard line, Nagy met in the backfield. Brought down for a loss back near the 21. Looked like it was Aiden Prunskis again on that stop. 6 2 240. And you look at that defensive front. Charlie Dix, 215. Monte Love, 250. And Prunskis, 240. Yeah, Prunskis, a weight man on mm. the uh, track team, throw shot and disc. Second and 13. Flags. Penalty will blow this one dead. This might be on Homestead here. Their fourth penalty tonight. Dead ball foul. Offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. And they were trying to come on a blitz that mm. time. Jumped the neutral zone. Got into that neutral zone. So second down and eight following the penalty. Following the penalty, second down and eight on the 26-yard line. They'll mark it at the 26, again from the pistol. Comes back near side, ball thrown low, incomplete. Intended for Kyle Janke, Yankee the junior. Griffin Bowers out there in coverage for Homestead. Griffin Bowers on the coverage. 
first look at Yankee tonight. The 6'2", 170-pound senior had three receptions last week against Marquette. Mentioned uh, one of the outstanding 300 hurdlers in the state. Mm. Homestead now has brought in its third and long package. Took out the nose man. Walked up Jet Stelts to put pressure on the quarterback. Four receivers, two by two. Holtz with plenty of time. Now on the scramble. He'll run it up the sideline, and he will get out of bounds. Let's see where they mark him. They'll mark him short of the 30-yard line. Chased out of there by Drew Wilson. Once again, you can see the difficulty Homestead's having rushing the quarterback. However, the coverage has been so good, all of a sudden, Vance had to take uh, off out of the backfield. Very impressed with the linebacking and secondary core here for Homestead tonight. Jockums to punt. Bruno to receive. Good kick. Got it to turn over. Bruno signaling for a fair catch. Off his face mask and it's recovered by Arrowhead. First turnover of the night goes to the Arrowhead Warhawks. Coming down with it is Christian Rothmeyer on special teams after it deflected off of Bruno. Can't advance it. We'll take another look. A beautiful punt. Got it to turn over. And it just crept up on Bruno. Get high and on the shoulder pad. Yep. And Rothmeyer was right there to make the recovery. So the first takeaway tonight by Arrowhead. And that sets them up at the Homestead 39-yard line. Yeah, they misplayed a punt earlier in the first half. Two by two are the receiving core here for the Warhawks. Single back Nagy. He'll get the call. Nagy around the right side. Nagy with a quick burst inside the 15. Make the 25-yard line. Miles Kelly making the tackle. Move the chains, a best electric first down, one more look. Plants that foot, you see that burst. 15 yards put down by Nagy that time. Drew Nagy, the senior, 135 yards last week in the victory over Marquette. Coach Harriet, glad to see that track speed once again. <laughs> Throwing, open, catch made, and darting out of bounds. Whiskey, short of the first down, a gain of about eight. Miles Kelly also out there that time, getting whiskey to the turf near the boundary. You can see why the Arrowhead coaching staff is excited with Vance Holtz. Mm. Throws an excellent ball, good timing with his receivers. We're inside the Salvation Army red zone. Each time an opponent gets inside its opponent's 20-yard line, it's the Salvation Army red zone. Doing the most good, Salvation Army. Volunteer or donate, visit samilwaukee.org. Officials have stopped play here. We have a, a clock issue, perhaps. Maybe there was a question of whether he was out of bounds or mm. not. And They're going to reset. It's a 6.52, I believe, on the clock. So he must have gone out of bounds, yep. and the clock continued to run. It's early in the season for the crew, too. Nagy to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No less than four, maybe five defenders there, led by Drew Wilson. He's played a heck of a ball game tonight. That nice return to start the second half, and a couple of nice sticks defensively by Wilson. And it's third down and one. We saw Jet Stelts from that outside linebacker position come roaring into the backfield, forcing the Nagy to go back inside. Third and one here for Arrowhead. Holtz under pressure, able to get away, got it away. It's back of the end zone. Touchdown, Arrowhead. What a grab. This pass is complete. Trip Walsh. Able to make a tightrope catch on the back line. Well, we mentioned earlier that he's a high jumper and a long jumper. 
on the track team and you saw that high jumping ability come into play and also you credit with Vance Holtz for keeping his cool. Goes up, high points the ball. Got the foot down inbounds when he made the catch. Pretty good coverage by yeah. Chung. You can't. <laughs> and Arrowhead reclaims the lead. Jockums on for the extra point. Sonelli on the hold. McKinnon on the snap. Sonelli able to place it. And it's through. And the kick is good. We will take a break. Arrowhead reclaims the lead here. Back and forth affair here in Homestead. 10-6 over the Highlanders. Our Friday night rivals by Heiser Automotive Group presented by Landmark Credit Union. Well, there's a new show coming to My24 that will have everyone talking. Karamo Brown gives insightful advice to his guests while exploring a variety of subjects. Watch Karamo weekdays at 10, starting September 19th, here on My24. John Weiser, Terry Kelly, Mike McGivern with you from Homestead High School tonight. Arrowhead reclaims the lead here by a score of 10 to 6. A muffed punt. The turnover cashed in. Well, we mentioned uh, in our keys to the game that the special teams mm -hmm. had to contribute for sure, Arrowhead, sure. and they have. They've really set up both scores, uh, covering the punt, and uh, Homestead not uh, fielding it. So, Menards kickoff brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. And coming up the near side with it. Across the 20, breaking it outside. Anthony Chung with a nice return out to the 45-yard line. Well, before it was Drew Wilson, this time Chung, Kyle Yankee, able to make the tackle. So you've got two of your defensive players returning kickoffs for the Highlanders. Not to mention a three-sport athlete and our Scholar Athlete Award nominee tonight. There he is getting a little break on the sideline. Once again, the Highlanders with good field position. Could return to the second half kickoff almost to the same spot, but could not cash in. Arrowhead defense able to buckle up. Balistrieri will lead them to the line of scrimmage. He has Bruno in the backfield. Three receivers to the right here. And it's a fake on the sweep. Balistrieri and a flag comes in. We might have a face mask call here. Thomas Curry may have gotten him across the face mask. We'll see. Wonder if it's going to be a five yarder. He's trying to read the uh, signal. Five yard face mask. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. Run. Well, then. That 2200 vision paid off. I was off just going to say, nothing gets past <laughs> Coach Kelly. He was right on that one. We'll take another look. They faked the jet sweep that time on a read. And right there. Ooh. Got him by the I, side of the helmet that time. Might have got him a little more than I initially thought. See if it's time for the curl wheel. Yep. Yeah. They'll give it to Bruno, and Bruno nowhere to go. Actually, we'll 
get back maybe to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Jacob Weida, who's played a heck of a game defensively for the Warhawks tonight, with another tackle, I believe. That is tackle seven plus a sack tonight. Well, he was honorable mention all-conference selection a year ago, and just continuing to pick up where he left off. See them check down to those wristbands. Full house backfield here now. They'll break it up with a man in motion. They'll toss to Bruno. Bruno with some room. Pulled down from behind. Should have enough for the first down out near the 46-yard line. They'll move the chains. Thomas Curry, his fifth tackle tonight for the Warhawks. They break up that full house, and they go toss sweep here to the near side. One of the things that Coach Drake Zortman said had to happen this week, had to get better blocking out of his backs. When you play in the backfield for Homestead, running that full house look or a couple of their other sets, you have to have excellent blocking from the guys not carrying the ball. Best electric first down from the 46 of Arrowhead. Balistrieri ran into a wall. Might have been Gilbert. Yep, Jace Gilbert. The other defensive end from the near side, the 6'5 junior making the stop. And Voida working that right side, and this time. Second and 10. Got Gilbert working the left side. No gain, second and 10. Bruno breaks a tackle, but Voida right there. Getting some help as well. Connor Foley blocked an extra point earlier tonight. Actually made that nice play on the Dallas Jury run. Yeah. Touchdown saving tackle. No gain on the play. Again, no gain. Brings up third and ten. Third down and ten. Single receiver left, two receivers to the right here. Bellistrieri puts it up. Battle for the ball, and it is caught inside the 20 yard line. Beautiful catch. Jonah Winsler with a beautiful catch. Anthony McDowell draped all over him. Somehow, Winsler came up with a catch. 6'4 sophomore used his height through his advantage that time. Followed that ball in. Actually played it off the hands of the defensive huh. back. What concentration that time by sophomore Jonah Wensler. And we're in the Salvation Army red zone for Homestead. Balistrieri. Ripped down at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Sal Balistrieri on the quarterback keeper. Brings up second and ten. Bakari Kunda, his second tackle tonight. Well, Fritz Rauch has those defenders, you know, eyes on the quarterback as they know Balistrieri, key to the offense. Second and nine on the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 15. We'll call it second and nine. Ben Lanen in motion. The give is to Bruno. Picks his way through the left side for a couple. Dominic Bruno on the carry. Brings up third and long. Bakari Kanda again there on the stop. Tackled away by Dilzer. Gain of two sets up third and seven. Two yard gain on the play. Third and seven. Minute 45 to play here in the third. Let's see if Fritz Raup sends one of his linebackers to put pressure. They do, and Balistrieri able to get free. Breaks a couple of tackles before he's wrapped up near the 10-yard line. Jaden Rouser scooting across the linebacking area there. Able to make the play, and he'll bring up fourth down. One more look. They did send a couple of linebackers that time. Right there. Nice job. And it looks like the field goal unit's going to come on. Sean West. 
will work from the left hash mark. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt from the left hash mark. And now a timeout taken by Homestead. Perhaps Drake Zortman's second thoughts here. While he decides, we will let you know our closed captioning tonight is brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock, identity theft protection starts here. Third quarter, I suppose, you know, your train of thought says, well, you know, how often are we going to get down here? We'd still be trailing 10-9. What kind of confidence do you have? And it's, it's one of those things. Everybody in the stands thinks they know the right answer. <laughs> and no matter what the coach decides, they'll consider him wrong if it doesn't play out. Head coach Drake Zortman, also the offensive coordinator for this Homestead team. So, Math specialist here at Homestead mm -hmm. High School, so I'm sure he's working out all of the analytics. Mm -hmm. Great guy to talk to. He is a, gave us a lot of time here at practice this week. Yeah, as did Arrowhead. Yep. The, the cooperation from the coaches of these teams has really been wonderful because they want to celebrate, you know, sure. what their kids are doing here. So, Mutual respect for both coaching staffs here tonight. Well, I think they're going to go for it here. Pulled West back. Fourth and a long four. They'll run two by here into the near side. They're going to bring a backer once again. Gonna go over the middle, caught! No! It was dropped, incomplete. Intended for Wensler, who made that beautiful catch oh, so to put him in the red zone, could not handle it here. One more look. Great design here. He got inside. Just Ball was just thrown low, couldn't get it. Low. Yeah. Oh, he got the inside leverage that time. You know, Wensler 6'4", you know, long way to reach down. Nobody feels worse than Jonah does right at this moment. But once again, he, he got him down here. So you have to remember, mm -hmm. forget that play, move on to the next. Arrowhead takes over on downs. They'll come over near side. Nagy with some running room. Out across the 40 to the 42-yard line. 31-yard run. Griffin Bowers there to make the stop. Yeah, how often do you see that happen after a team has a turnover or has a play like that, drop pass, other team hits you in the face. Now, you know, how well can you gather yourself and regain some momentum? Cutback was intended to go to the right side. Cutback to his left at the line of scrimmage and able to open up some room now for the offense from their own 42, a best electric first down for Arrowhead. Nagy, nope, this is not Nagy. Nick Sinelli, his first carry tonight, six foot junior. Nick Wolt, the linebacker, able to make the tackle. Yeah, Sinelli is also the backup quarterback for Arrowhead, besides being a running back. And that will end our third quarter. What a ball game tonight through three quarters. Back and forth we go, this time Arrowhead by four. As we head to the fourth, our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals, presented by Landmark Credit Union.
Fourth quarter set to begin. Second down, eight for Arrowhead. Leading by four. Dodging and weaving. Nearly getting to the 45 at yard line. Anthony Chung there to make the stop. Chung coming up from that safety yep. net. If he had gotten past Anthony, he might have been gone to the races. A key third down here. Third and a long eight. Holtz from the pistol, two by two, the receivers. Blitz coming, steps into the teeth, has a man out there. It is incomplete. Intended for Kyle Yankee. Griffin Bowers again there, like glue, sticking with his man. Yeah, Yankee got past him a little bit, Paul, just a shade overthrown. Now head coach Matt Harris, you know, also the special teams coach, mm. See if he's got anything in mind here. You know, you're, you're on 45. Got to beware of the fake. Jockham's the punter. Bruno inside is 25, awaiting the kick. Jockham's with another nice punt away from Bruno. Takes a beautiful arrowhead bounce inside the 20. And will roll dead. At the seven yard line, we head to the sideline. Mike, what do you have? Hey guys, I'm here with Jamie Penza. And uh, Jamie's uh, a spokesperson tonight for Community Advocates, but she's also with uh, Washington Ozaki Public Health Department. And we've got a chance to talk a lot here. And and giving back to the community is so important to you. It's, it's personal. Yeah, I love the fact that I have such a great job where I get to give back to the community. Today I'm here on behalf of the Substance Use Coalition, and we're just getting the word out that we have a lot of great resources for um, substance use um, addiction in our community. Hey, and a Kenosha Trapper girl grew up in Kenosha, and, and I love the stories that you told me. So thank you so much how personal this is and how important it is for you to give back. Thank you. Yeah, you bet, Jamie. It's nice to meet you. Back to you, boys. Wow, what a play there as keeping his concentration on that pass. Jack Reed, the fullback, another sophomore, somehow got past Connor Foley to make that catch. What did we tell you about Homestead being willing to throw from deep in their own yep. territory? Zordman, the riverboat gambler. Into the 31 yard line, first down, Homestead. 23 yards on that pickup there was nearly picked off. But Reed kept the concentration, the fullback, his first reception tonight. A best electric first down for Homestead. Out to the 31-yard line. Arrowhead short, one man. They bring him out here late. Well, Jace Gilbert limped off uh, for Arrowhead. Defensive end. Bruno, left side to the 35. Gain of about four. Ty, uh, Ty Carnell and Anthony McDowell both there. Okay, we got a flag on that far sideline. It's a sideline violation, sideline warning. Sideline warning called against Arrowhead. They'll wind the clock. Second down, seven here. Balistrieri stood up at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Thomas Curry. Not fooled by that fake. They'll give him forward progress to the 35. All right, key down here, third, third and about six. They'll start with a full house backfield here. They'll break it up. Van Lanen will motion out to trips to the right side. Bruno the single back. Wensler here to the near side, the single receiver. Quick throw. 
Far side, pass complete, short of the first down. Forward progress near the 40-yard line. Klieger with the catch. Aiden Klieger, the tight end, brought down by Brady Mater. Short of the first down, it'll bring up fourth and two. We get on that riverboat again here. No hesitation here. They're going no. for it right from the get-go. Approaching nine minutes to play, trailing by four. Homestead will go for it again on fourth and two. Bringing both linebackers. Balistrieri. He's short. Yep, he is going to be short. They brought the linebackers up the middle. Balistrieri. We got a very favorable spot. Uh, It's going to be about a half a yard short. And Drake Zortman just threw his clipboard. It may have been flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct here. I don't know if he was expressing displeasure with the placement or whether he was upset with how his guys executed the play. It's one of those things. Well short. Arrowhead will take over at the Homestead 40-yard line. And we may add some yardage onto that, too. So this will move the football to the 25-yard line. Huge penalty. Well, that Homestead... You know, offensive line, Charlie Cobbs at 6'3", 290, good size. But both guards are 210. Your one tackle is 205. Your other tackle, Brady Buttermore, a little bigger, 245. And then you get Arrowhead coming up with their linebackers. Kind of get outmanned at the point of attack. So with the penalty now, Arrowhead will start this drive at the Homestead 25, up by four. Under nine minutes to go. And they'll throw it wide. Catch is made. Down to the nine-yard line. Whiskey with another catch. Anthony Chung able to make that stop. Whiskey now with six receptions on the night. It'll be first and goal. A best electric first down inside the Salvation Army red zone. Nagy going up the middle. Moving the pile inside the 10 down to about the 8-yard line. Of maybe one or two. Monte Love in the middle of all that for the Highlanders. Monte Love on the tackle. No game on the play, second and goal. Homestead students well represented here tonight. Second and goal. Nagy gets the call, cuts back inside the five, touchdown, Arrowhead. A Planet Fitness touchdown for Nagy. Nine yard run. Drew Nagy, the senior. You could see the hole open up to the left. Trying to rip that ball away. Nick Wolt. Trying to take that one away. Jockums for the extra point. Whistle before the snap. False start penalty here on Arrowhead. False start call against Arrowhead. Well, a two score lead, Mm. but just a little over seven and a half to go.
This attempt will come from the 15, make it a 25-yard extra point here for Jockums. Wyatt McKinnon, the long snapper. Nick Sinelli on the hold. High snap. Sinelli gets it down. Jockums gets it away, and it is good. 17 to 6 now in favor of Arrowhead. Just over seven and a half minutes to play here at Homestead. They were able to stop the Highlanders on fourth down, add on the penalty, the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, set up the drive at the 25. And here's the run by Drew Nagy. Good blocking by the mm. receivers to the outside. Yankee and Walsh, along with Whiskey out there to lead the way. Well, if this was like last year, don't go anywhere. No. Stay right in front of the television. Homestead, Arrowhead scored what, with two minutes left in the game to take the lead? Arrowhead did, and then Homestead came, came back, back to score with under 30 seconds left, a touchdown and a two-point two conversion. A lot of football left to be played. Well, a couple of nice returns here in the second half by Wilson and Chung, so... Let's see if they can bring this home crowd back into play here tonight. Once again, our Menards kickoff brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Low squib. That will make it into the end zone for a touchback. Homestead will take it at their own 20. Well, coming up following the game, stay tuned for our U.S. Marines Player of the Game presentation. That's brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. Oh, this is going to be a, a tough decision. We may have to go to a vote here. A lot of special plays tonight. Nagy on offense for Arrowhead. Balistrieri had a big night running the ball. Big play. Now he's going to have to throw here. Hitch a couple of times coming back near side. And the late flag. As the pass intended for Jonah Wensler, Anthony McDowell was in coverage and may have committed pass interference. Both players going for pass that football. Defense, 15 yard penalty. First down. Penalty pass interference. And it's a 15 yard penalty. And again, in high school, it's marked off from the line of scrimmage. We'll take another look. I thought that was pretty good coverage there on the part of the defender. Uh, Drake Sorbonne. Anthony McDowell. Having Ballesturi throw a little bit more this evening than a week ago. <laughs> and he's demonstrated that he is able to, you know, deliver that ball to a spot. Full house backfield behind Ballesturi. He'll line up under center. Balistrieri running for his life. Finally brought down. Play whistle dead as forward progress stopped. Thomas Curry, a strong night for Curry. Seven tackles tonight for Curry. Little, the six-foot senior. Little line twist by mm -hmm. the Arrowhead defense there, and Curry was able to come in underneath that twist. Be a loss of one, second and 11. We'll move it to the 40. Take that the 34 yard line. Second and 11. Trips to the right side here. Once again, you can see the one defensive lineman line up a little bit deeper, and they're going to run the twist when he does that. Jace Gilbert, who was. Injured earlier here in the second half, able to step up and make the sack. Right downstairs we go, Mike. You have a special guest. 
You know, I do. He uh, He's my 12-year-old grandson, Keegan Bonner. Plays for the Brookfield East Junior Spartans. Plays uh, football, basketball, and lacrosse. Got a big game tomorrow. Last time I interviewed him, he didn't talk. Keegan, why do you have the Kansas City Chiefs jersey on? I have no idea. Yeah, who got that for you? You. That's it. And uh, what was I thinking? Hey, um, what, uh, what position do you play tomorrow? Receiver and defensive back. He's one of the pretty boys, man, for Brookfield East. Boys, back to you. All right, Mike, thank you. Third and long, Balistrieri again running for his life, ran into his own lineman, and it gets swallowed up back at the 25-yard line. Jace Gilbert again with the sack. That's two sacks tonight for Gilbert. And the punting unit will come on here for Homestead. Sean West going to be called on here to flip the field if he can. Yeah, he has to. He has to pin them back deep. Timeout. Arrowhead. Arrowhead will take a timeout. We'll take our break as well. 5.17 to go here in the fourth. Warhawks on top of the Highlanders. Your Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. Player of the game, what do you think? Yeah, Nagy would be a good choice. Woida, the defender. Okay. Number nine on defense for Arrowhead tonight. Nine and six. Thomas Curry has yep. also Curry. had a very good game. Yep. You can also find additional videos, photos, and more. Tonight's game will also be rebroadcast from the Arrowhead Sports Center at 7 p.m. Thursday night's game will be broadcast from the Arrowhead. Well, what do you think, Terry? You want to go defense tonight? I, I think the defense has, has done a nice I job. I think Woida, number nine defensive Woyda. end. He's got seven tackles and a sack tonight and a couple of tackles for losses. Okay. Chase the thrill of the win every weeknight as Steve Harvey brings the laughs during two full hours of family feud fun. Play for the win and level up your life weeknights John at 5 and 6 on CW18. John Weiser, Terry Kelly, Mike McGivern, and our My24 Sports crew with you from Homestead High School tonight. Fourth down, Homestead in punt formation. Junior Sean West. It's off a low line drive kick that will bounce and bound its way out of bounds near the 30-yard line. They will mark it at the 31, and that's where Arrowhead will take over. Close captioning tonight brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection starts here. And our touchdowns tonight presented by Planet Fitness, your judge-free zone. A big one here by Nagy late has given Arrowhead a two-score lead. And they will have the football here. Just over five minutes remaining. Looking to get to 2-0 and on the year before heading into that gauntlet known as the Classic 8 Conference. This is Sinelli trying to get to the outside. Breaks a tackle. Sinelli for the first down and more. Out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. 15-yard run by Nick Sinelli, the junior. Spelling Nagy here on this drive. All those two big junior tackles mm -hmm. on the outside and offense. Garrett Sexton at 6'7", 240. Getting, starting to get a lot of interest. And Derek Jensen, who's had many offers already. And then you've got the solid middle with uh, Luke Eicher at 6'2", 240, totally redid his body coming into the season. And the two guards, 
Wyatt McKinnon at 275, Raleigh Zergeball at 270. So, you know, they want to grind this ball down the throat, Homestead, and run time. Again, Sinelli the right side. Cuts it back at the hash. Will take it into Homestead territory. Close to another best electric first down. Sinelli with two nice runs here to open up this drive. Brought down by Jackson Names. And you're seeing that depth start to pay mm-hmm. off a little bit for Arrowhead as they're able to bring in some people fresh in the backfield. And also... A couple of those guys for Homestead are doing special teams work as well as starting on defense. Starting to wear out. And again, Vance Holtz waiting for that back judge to begin his countdown. This time it's Nagy. Big run over the right side. Nagy inside the 20. Touchdown, Arrowhead. Nagy on the carry. Second touchdown of the quarter by Drew Nagy, the senior. And Arrowhead putting this game out of reach. Yeah, Nagy had to spend a lot of time on the bench last year with Elijah Meyer Parr, who rushed for over 2,100 yards. But Nagy demonstrating that the ability he has. And once again, as we mentioned earlier, track coach Chris Harriet mm-hmm. loves to watch that sprint speed. Coach Harris also is an assistant mm. coach in track. Jockums for the extra point. It is up. And it is good. 24-6 to six Arrowhead on a pair of touchdown runs by Drew Nagy tonight. That one from 48. We take another look. Once he got into that secondary, he was gone. Those big receivers getting isolated on your corners with blocking. Opens that up. Well, maybe we reopen the debate on player of the game. 134 yards for Nagy tonight on 19 carries and two touchdowns. Two clutch scores here in this fourth quarter to put this game... Yeah, a couple, oh, of, nice. a couple of mishandled punts on the part of Homestead kind of opened the floodgate a little bit. And then, you know, you look at Arrowhead brings 85 to 90 guys dressed for the game. Mm. That kind of depth, you know, allows you to do some things, and you do wear people down. Sonelli with a couple of nice runs to start that drive, and then Nagy caps it off. with his second touchdown of the game. And again, trying to avoid the long return. Chung cuts back, spins out of a tackle, takes it across the 30 to the near sideline near the 33. Brady Carpenter there to make the tackle on special teams for Arrowhead. Well, Arrowhead opens Classic 8 action next week with Kettle Moraine. Uh, highly regarded team. They've got quite a few guys coming back. Quarterback uh, Chase Spellman, prominently among those players returning. Meanwhile, Homestead goes and plays Slinger next week, and Slinger has been a kind of thorn in the side. Intercepted on that pass play, Jaden Rouser. He'll take it to the house. Bellister's pass intercepted by Jaden Rouser. Rouser. 33 yards for the Arrowhead touchdown. Puts this one on ice. The defense getting into the act here tonight. Well, Fritz Rauch didn't like the fact that they didn't get turnovers last week. Has to be pleased with tonight's performance. Watch this read on this pass. Just 
jumps in front of the intended receiver, Wensler. Nice block that time by Ben Hartzell, clearing the path for Rouser. Jockums for the extra point. Low snap, Sinelli. Fire, fire is the call. Sinelli will be brought down. It was a low snap. Miles Kelly on Sinelli special Garrett. teams able to make, a, stop make the stop. We'll take another look the here at the interception. The and a beautiful job by Rouser, the senior, able to jump the route, get in front of the intended receiver. Won a nitpick, he had the ball in the wrong hand going down the left <laughs> sideline, but that'll be corrected in film tomorrow. Put in the box score, I it scored. scored. <laughs> you got it. This was once a 10-6 ball game. Twenty-seven unanswered here by Arrowhead. Three scores here in this fourth quarter. Nagy with a pair of touchdowns and Rouser with the interception return for a touchdown. The Menards kickoff brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Time they'll kick it away. Some miscommunication there between Chung and Wilson. So it goes through the end zone for the touchback. And so Homestead now, just over three minutes to play. Homestead begins first and 10 on their 20 yard line. Got a number of new folks mm -hmm. in, obviously, for Arrowhead at this point. Front four has been changed out. Tries the middle that time. Bruno on, Bruno on the carry. Carter Jamel with the stop. One of the newcomers in that defense for Arrowhead. In about seven. It'll set up second and three as we're under three minutes to play. As you mentioned, Homestead will take on the Owls next week of Slinger, and Slinger defeated Homestead last year. One of their two conference yes. losses. They, they dropped one to Cedarburg, and then they got hot at the end of the season, got to the championship game. CJ Party on the carry. Carry that time by... TJ, carry it, and Mason Waterfield in there now to make that stop. Third down and two on the 28 yard line. Gain of about two sets up third and two. Arrowhead will take on Kettle Moraine last week. That ought to be an interesting matchup. Kettle Moraine with some skill people back as Bruno takes it up the middle for the first down. Out to the 41 yard line. Gain of 13 on the play. Brought down by Carson Ketterhagen. Carson Ketterhagen on the stop. One point from the 41 yard line. First down, Holstead. So a best electric first down for the Highlanders here. 90 seconds to play in this one. Full house backfield. And give it to the fullback. 
nothing there. Jack Reed, the fullback on the carry. Evan Boxley with the stop. You can see these younger guys mm-hmm. for Arrowhead just frothing in mm-hmm. the mouth trying to get in there. They're kind of swarming to the tackle. Well, it's interesting. You and I talked before the game, Terry, that you know they have, what, 50, 55 out for the freshman team, and all the sophomores get called up and dress for varsity. Well, they practice together, so they're getting, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of times they're serving as the scout team for the, the varsity, but, you know, they're getting coached up. Second and nine, Bruno takes it across the 45 to the 47. Noah Ledvina there to make the stop. And that will probably be our final play here tonight. Homestead will get off one more play. No gain. And the clock hit zero. Your final here tonight, Arrowhead, a big fourth quarter. Pulls away from Homestead tonight. They go to 2-0 and on the season, 30-6. to The Highlanders fall to 1-1 and on the year. Stay tuned. We will have our United States Marine Player of the Game presentation along with our trophy presentation. All of that in the postgame coming your way next on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. I let's go with Nagy. We'll give it to Nagy. Dad Houlihan, but it's Hallahan. Eamon? Hallahan. Gotcha. Got it. Well, entering the fourth quarter, this was a tight ball game, but Arrowhead comes up big, a pair of Matt Nagy touchdowns here in this fourth quarter, along with an interception return for a touchdown by Rossville, and Arrowhead pulls away here at the end, picking up the victory. Time now for our United States Marines Player of the Game Award presentation. To that, we go to Mike McGivern. So, guys, we had a lot of votes going on, and number nine, I'll tell you what, he came a close second. He had a heck of a game, young man. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you did You did good, man. That was a good one to get, huh? Hey, our uh, Marine, I, I tell you what, I said to Drew Nagy, I said, hey, you had a great game. He goes, my offensive line's unbelievable, isn't it? I go, yeah, they are. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I love my big boys. I just got to say that. Man, you're going to buy them dinner or something. Oh, that's yeah. too much. Yeah, no, no, that's too much. That's too much. They, yeah, they eat too much. Maybe uh, Mr. and Mrs. Nagy, maybe somebody at the school get those boys. Hey, when, when you have a uh, – 
a player of the game like this. And, and, and before we go on the air, I say congratulations. The first thing he talks about is his teammates. you got to love a guy like that. No, a absolutely. And, and he knows that everybody's valuable. And uh, he led them in bringing it home. And I, real quick quote, out of 100 men, 10 are just targets. 80 maybe shouldn't even be there. Nine are the real warriors. But there's one. There's one who brings home the victory. Man. And you're the one that brought it home tonight. Man, there it is. Back to you, boys. Wow, Man. tough to follow that up. But this is the night that uh, Mr. Nagy had. Drew Nagy, the senior. 19 carries, 134 yards tonight as we take a look at his highlights tonight. Brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. Nice little run here. Set them up in the red zone. I see that first. Yes. Yeah. And a couple of clutch touchdowns here in this fourth quarter. There you see the 43-yard run. And then this one here effectively put it out of reach. The nine-yard touchdown run. And that 19-yard touchdown run. 134 yards. One reception for seven yards. Our player of the game tonight is Drew Nagy. Once again to Mike McGivern. Hey, boys, so um, I've known Coach Harris a long time. And uh, when I first got here, I went up, I said, Coach, good win last week. He said, you know, um, Mike, we got a chance to be pretty good. And I kind of looked at him. He said, I think we got a chance with that smile. And normally when I talk to him, he said, you know, I don't know. We'll see if things break right. Not today. And I said, Coach, you were right. He said, man, I told you, we got a chance to wear some teams down. Man, you're proud of these boys. Oh, so proud. The way they answered out of the second half, that was our focus all week, was like, can we come out of half and really show everybody who we are? And I can't even be begin to tell you how proud of this group I am for that. So I know I've known you again a long time. You'll celebrate from here to the bus. And then you start thinking next week, don't you? Oh, of course, of course. We got a big conference game Ooh. coming up. You know, Kettle Moraine is a formidable opponent, but I promise you this, these guys will be ready. Man, there it is. Matt Harris, Arrowhead, well done. You guys showed really well tonight. Good luck next week. Coach, good to see you again, brother. Thank you. All right, boys. Warhawks over the Highlanders tonight by a final of 30 to 10. We will take a break and uh, return with one final word here from Homestead High School. After this, you're watching Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union.
depth and size one out here tonight as Arrowhead pulled away from Homestead here tonight. 30-6 to six your final, 27 unanswered, and really wore down the Highlanders in that second half. Down really, I think, played, played a key role of how this game turned. Plus, you've got to look at Nagy and say, okay, this young man really is able to turn on the speed. Well, next week we get to see Marquette, the Hilltoppers, against Germantown, the greater Metro Conference opener for both squads. Yeah, Marquette played Arrowhead tough last week. Uh, they were only trailing at the half today to Catholic Memorial 14-7 before Memorial kind of spurred it away, and uh, Germantown was locked in a tight game with Hartford. Yep, you can tune in and uh, see our repeat broadcast of tonight's game tomorrow afternoon at 2. Make sure to check that out. Then tune in next Friday at 7. Germantown, that group of Warhawks taking on the Hilltoppers of Marquette University High from Hart Park. We'll have it for you live next Friday night at 7 o'clock. Big thank you to all of the sponsors who bring Friday Night Rivals to you each and every week. Of course, our title sponsors, the Heiser Automotive Group, celebrating 100 years of service, Landmark Credit Union, the Army National Guard, our good friends at Best Electric, and Carthage College on board this year, the Salvation Army, the United States Marines, LifeLock, Planet Fitness, the Milwaukee Admirals, GlaxoSmithKline, Menards, and Community Advocates. That'll do it tonight from Homestead High School, where Classic 8 met the North Shore, and it was Arrowhead of the Classic 8, winning this one by a score of 30-6 to six over Homestead. For our My24 Sports crew, from Mike McGivern, Terry Kelly, I'm John Weiser. Thanks for tuning in to Friday Night Rivals, your Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals, presented by Landmark Credit Union. Good night, everyone.